Tell me honestly. What do you boys think my career is at right now? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be discussing how Elvis Presley has been portrayed over the years. You believe that? Uh-huh. Well, I believe it if you believe it. Well, I will, I mean it. Both television and the silver screen are littered with varied depictions of the king of rock and roll, with some taking more liberties than others with the life of Elvis, Aaron Presley. In this video, we'll be taking a more in-depth look at some of these depictions throughout the decades. What's your favorite on-screen portrayal of the king? Do you prefer serious or funny representations? Elvis's station as a pop culture icon is secure, even if interest in the king generally seems to be a cyclical thing, rearing its head every few years as younger generations discover Presley's music and personality. In that moment, in a flash of lightning, I watched that skinny boy in the pink suit transform into a superhero. Way way Austin Butler's 2022 portrayal of The Man is a great example of this, as Baz Luhrmann's biopic presents a soup-to-nuts story of Presley's life from childhood to stardom and beyond. I'm gonna show you what the real Elvis is like tonight! Butler, to his credit, puts in an astonishing performance, one that's nuanced and measured, yet with a passion that feels barely contained. Everybody, everybody. The plot of Lerman's Elvis may be told from the perspective of Presley's manager Colonel Tom Parker, but the movie is all butlers, from the actor's first appearance on screen to his final moments as the king. What makes the film even more impressive is how Butler and Lerman manage to achieve a rare instance where Elvis's mannerisms and character are captured, top to bottom. We're lost in a cloud with too much rain. Basically, any actor attempting to channel Presley needs to get four major aspects down. The voice, the moves, the clothes, and the face. And this hasn't always been the case with other portrayals of Elvis. For example, Val Kilmer's cameo as the king in the 1993 classic True Romance is one where Presley's smoldering voice is on point, yet director Tony Scott and crew make it a point to largely obscure Kilmer's face. Well, can you live with it? What? I said, can you live with it? Live with what? That son of a bitch walking around beating the same air as you getting away with it every day. This isn't necessarily a poor creative choice, as Kilmer more than makes up for it with a sexual swagger and captivating screen presence. Val's Elvis isn't on screen too often, but when he is, we as the audience can't help but stand up and take notice. Clarence, I like you. I always have. Always will. Sometimes, however, audiences pay attention to an Elvis performance for the wrong reasons. And Elvis would get real deep, and he would he would uh, do, wise men say only fools rush in. And he had a quick vibrato <laughs> and... Uh... For example, when an actor decides to portray the king in a broad fashion, playing into the stereotypical and exaggerated mannerisms associated with Presley. Jack White's cameo as Elvis in Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story is memorable, but perhaps only due to the musician's willingness to dive headfirst into parody. What now? No, excuse me, what? I'm just saying, we gotta follow that. And... Well, sometimes you have to go all out when you're the king and you can't help it, you know? Unfortunately, parodying Elvis seems to be an avenue that's irresistible for many actors. And it's here where sometimes those actors risk coming across as Elvis's impersonators, rather than the real McCoy. There's two things you need to know. Uh -huh. I'm the king, and number two is, look out, man! Look at that, they're coming at you, you see that? It's called karate, man, and only two kinds of people know it. The Chinese and the king. There are exceptions to this rule, of course. Two that come to mind are Michael Shannon in Elvis and Nixon, and Bruce Campbell in Bubba Hotep. Women were throwing themselves at me because they could imagine I was Elvis. Only, I was Elvis, playing Sebastian Half, playing Elvis. The latter example is particularly intriguing, because it dares to discuss not only the theories behind whether or not Presley faked his own death, but also the proliferation of impersonators that continue to this day. Elvis is dead, Mr. Half knows that, don't you, Mr. Half? Hell no, I'm right here. I ain't dead. Yet. 
Campbell plays an Elvis who's in the twilight of his life, but full of energetic memories about the karate chops and capescapades of his younger years. It's a performance that, like Butler's, is nuanced with a tinge of melancholy. I'll be damned if I let some foreign graffiti writing, soul sucking son of a bitch in an oversized cowboy hat and boots take my friend's souls and shit them down the visitor's toilet. We see firsthand how Elvis struggled with fame and his lack of anonymity. Conversely, Michael Shannon's Elvis is still steeped in that larger-than-life cartoon character the man would become during his Vegas residency days, yet still does so without coming across as condescending. I miss our talks, Jerry. Me too. I came out here to get you, man. I got work. Elvis and Nixon also showcases Elvis the man, a conservative individual with deep-seated ideas about what was right, what was wrong, and what needed to be changed about modern America. It's Elvis Aaron Presley. I know who you are. Oh. Well, my boys, they had it made for me. It has all their names on it in this tree, tree of life. Mm. Sweet. Shannon does all of the mugging and martial arts one might come to expect from a 1970s Elvis, but this never feels forced. Instead, Shannon's mannerisms seem gleaned from the actor's reported conversations with Jerry Schilling, a real-life friend of Elvis, who gave Shannon advice on how to approach the role. You made the right choice, sir. I swear I will do whatever I can to uphold the law, Mr. Well, President. Needs this notion of young versus old Elvis is always something that comes up when fans discuss their favorite eras of the man's career. How about New York? How about Hollywood? There's a big old world out there, Trix. As a result, some other portrayals of the king stress more Presley's roots as a fan of blues, soul, and gospel music, his burgeoning sexuality, and the controversy that emerged from a then-new style of music known as rock and roll. Mr. Phillips, am I gonna get on the records for real? I can't promise you will, son, but if you don't give me something I wanna hear, I guarantee you won't. To this end, Drake Milligan did a great job playing a young Elvis in the short-lived CMT series Sun Records. Although the show only ran for one season and doesn't solely follow the career of Elvis, Milligan's earnestness as an Elvis making his first musical moves definitely felt inspired. And I was drawn to it. I was drawn to the music and the, the, the jumpsuit and everything, and it just kind of kept growing. Michael St. Gerard also did a great job with his portrayal of a Sun Records-era Elvis in another short-lived series, simply titled Elvis. St. Gerard already had some experience playing the king in two films during the late 80s prior to his experience on the show. Although St. Gerard's singing scenes were dubbed by the voice of an actual Elvis impersonator, Ronnie McDowell, in the 90s series. Well, that's all right, mama. That's all right with you. Still, St. Gerard is believable as a youthful and energetic Elvis, as was Jonathan Reese Myers in the 2005 miniseries of the same name. The latter, in particular, is perhaps one of the better examples on this list of an actor getting Presley's accent and dialect pretty close to perfect. 50 Million Elvis Fans Can't Be Wrong was the title from one of Elvis's many, many compilation albums. Singing the variety show at school. Bonnie, I told you, I, I, I just can't do that. It plays into the passionate fandom the king still enjoys to this day. But it also speaks to the often spirited debates Elvis fans can get into with regards to their favorite Elvis portrayal. For many of these fans, that man is Kurt Russell, and the film was actually made for television. <laughs> Horror icon John Carpenter directed Russell in Elvis back in 1979, and it left a lasting impression long after its basic cable debut. Perhaps it's because of Russell's decision to actually go with an understated Elvis Presley that made the film so beloved by fans. What's wrong? I don't know. You know. It's the intro. Let's just cut the intro. Cut the intro, and I'll just come in on the lyrics from the count, you know? So let's take it from the top. There's a clear love for the man that gets mimicked on screen, as Carpenter and Russell nail the clothes, the moves, and, if you squint, the face. The voice, however, was Ronnie McDowell, again. The tears I shed the tears of joy. Granted, Austin Butler may be almost the spitting image of Presley, 
And perhaps David Keith had something of an underrated turn as the king in the 1988 comedy Heartbreak Hotel. But the shadow cast by Kurt Russell's Elvis is a large one. Son, you're talking to Elvis Presley here. Hey, I know exactly who I'm talking to. You're the only person who could help her. And I got 50 million other fans that say the same thing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. The best portrayals of Elvis Presley have always been the ones that dare to delve beyond the glitter and pass the time. But I can't tell in love with you. The King's story is inspiring, but it's also tragic as here was a man who often felt trapped by the very fame and fortune that came along with doing what he and we loved. But we also love Elvis, and we love watching Elvis. All of Elvis. From his own movies to these biopics that we've discussed today, the King took care of business, and his storied life will always captivate us every time it's brought to the screen. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.